Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to worship this morning. I'm Jamie Alexander. It's my privilege to be one of the pastors of this congregation. Today we are finishing up a sermon series following Easter. It's called The Real Reality Show, where we have been talking about the post-resurrection appearances of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Super glad that you're here to join with us today. I invite you to join with me as together we pray. Faithful and loving God, as we gather here this morning, we invite the power of your presence to consume us, to invade our hearts and our minds, to draw our, our attention away from warring distractions, and to help us to center and focus completely on you. Father, we gather here to worship you. And as we do so, we ask you, Transform and touch our hearts, our minds, and the fullness of our lives. We invite you here. And it's in the loving name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. And together we say, Amen. Good morning. I'd love to hear that. I'm Judy Rudd Platt. I'm one of the pastors here, and um, we are delighted that you are worshiping with us here this morning. If you have not already, please um, get the uh, registration pads on the inside aisles and fill those out uh, and pass them down. And especially our first time visitors, we would love to have information on how to contact you. We're not going to bother you, but later on in the week, we would love to bring you a mug with information about our church. I'm getting ready to do the announcements, and you'll see why you need more information about our church. We are a lively, alive, and thriving church, and so we would love to have that information to share, um, to share with you, uh, a mug and uh, further information about the church. Well, tomorrow night, we have two visitors from Uganda coming to our church. Uh, there will be a uh, church-wide covered dish potluck. I don't think it has to be covered, but that's, <laughs> that's the way it reads. <laughs> Just food. Um, and it will be in Becker Hall. The dinner is at 6, and our Ugandan visitors will be uh, giving us information on the Kibo ministry that Brother Jamie went and was a part of when he went to Uganda. Um, if you don't, for some reason, you don't cook or you don't feel like cooking, come on anyway. I think there'll be plenty of food, and it will be a wonderful opportunity for us to extend our hospitality to our friends um, from around the world. Uh, and then um, if you will take a look at your bulletin, you will notice that there are a lot of things going on. There's a lot of circle meetings this week, a lot of shepherd group meetings this week, soaring solos. All that information is in your bulletin, so I would direct you to your bulletin to find that uh, as well. Next Sunday is going to be the consecration service for the new Wesley Foundation building at the University of Arkansas campus. And so everyone is invited to attend that consecration. It's been a long time coming. They've been without a, a regular permanent building for a couple of years now. So this is a big celebration for all those students that are reached through campus ministries, through our United Methodist campus ministries. Um, also, if you have not noticed, Daryl has been gracing the narthex the last couple of Sundays. He is looking for, Daryl Botchen, uh, we're looking for volunteers for Meals on Wheels for the month of May. And so if that is something that you can help with, please get a hold of Daryl either while he's in the nar narthex or call the church office and we will sign you up. You know, I didn't know much about that before I came to this church, but I have had the opportunity to visit with some of the churches that, that come and help. That is a vital ministry for people in our community that cannot make their meals themselves. They depend on these meals. So it's important that we support that in the, the ways that we can. Last but not least, we have a Shepherd Groups Leaders meeting today right after the third service, and that will be held in the chapel. And yes, there will be lunch. So if you are a shepherd group leader, we invite you to come. Or if you would just like to know more about how the shepherd groups are led, we would love for you to be there. Um, anyway, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
invite you to remain standing as together we affirm our faith by the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From the end he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. That is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good in his presence here with us today, in God's presence all around us. Greet those next to you and thank them for their presence and find out where they've seen God recently in their lives. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.
Your mic. Okay. The scripture reading this morning is from Jeremiah 29, verses 10 through 14. Listen to the word of God. This is what the Lord says. I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then when you will call on me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declared the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite the ushers to come forward to receive our offering. And as we offer our tithes and offerings this morning, let us reflect on the truth that we serve a God who hears us when we pray and who is found when we seek God. And let our offerings this morning be a reflection of our gratitude for his faithfulness.
holy and loving God, your holy word tells us that you promise, you promise, Lord, to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a future with hope. Lord, we pray that you will bless these, our offerings this day, to bring about that future with hope. It's in Christ's holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated. This morning as we prepare to go before the Lord, Son of Grace, and in corporate prayer, I'm, I want to share with you some updates and, that we are aware of. One of the things that we want to share with you is the announcement of the 60th wedding anniversary of Boots and Joe Brimmer. Joe's here. She told Boots he couldn't come to church today. Um, he had surgery, so he's home recovering. So we thank you for sharing with us the beautiful arrangement, Joe. Joe jo is a floral designer, and she, she designed the arrangement herself. Currently, we know that Dale Veach has entered in the hospital over the weekend, concerned for his, his foot area, but um, I hopefully this, with some medication adjustments and all, things will look better. So we ask that you could continue to remember Dale and Nancy Veach in your prayers in this time, as well as all of those that are in times of recovery. Um, for those that have had procedures in the past week that are healing, those that are in ongoing healing time, and for those that are facing upcoming issues. We want to remember those that are in the nursing home and rehab facilities, and persons that are, are facing some major decisions in their life. Will you be faithful in prayer for them? Today we are, are blessed to be in prayer for Highlands Christian Church, you know, it's located on Forest Hills Boulevard. As you go past the church, remember to pay, pray for Pastor Paul Sill and the church's mission and ministry there. I invite you now to join with me before the Lord's throne of grace. And I invite you to join with us in our prayer song.
faithful God. You're the one that fashioned the earth. And you created us and gave us the breath within our being. And you designed us to be in a relationship with you and with each other. We thank you this morning for the power of your love in our life. For the truth of the resurrection of your son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you that in no way are we ever forgotten. But we're held precious to you. Today, Lord, as we gather as a church family, we lift our hearts to you in prayer, asking you to forgive us of our sin and our shame and our brokenness. Sadly, Lord, we, we do not always live the life or make the decisions or speak the language or act in the motives that you call us to as Christians. So we ask you to forgive us, to renew us in your love, strengthen us in your power, and enable us to be more than we were yesterday because of the help and aid and wisdom and strength and anointing power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the gift of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whose resurrection we celebrate in our hearts daily, in our lives continually. And for the gift of your Holy Spirit that is continually drawing us to you and revealing truth. We pray for our nation. We pray for our world. And we pray closer to home for Del Veach as he is in the hospital and pray for his health and his recovery. We also pray that for others that are on our prayer list. For those that are experiencing difficulties in the relationships. For those that are finding themselves struggling financially. For those that are making decisions. Father, help us to be a church family that is open to you and shares your love freely with those that we daily come in contact, whether we're here in worship or whether we're simply in a place of business or going through our routines of the day. Transform our hearts and our minds. Lord, we pray for the churches of Bella Vista for the mission and ministry of the churches. Today we have the privilege of praying for Highland Christian Church. We pray for Pastor Paul Seal, the church family, and the mission and ministry of the congregation. We thank you, Father, that we're never forgotten, but we're always, always kept close to your heart. And we ask all of this in the saving name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As together we pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Before I begin this morning, I'd like to make two really um, exciting announcements, um, announcements of God's presence among us. Uh, the first is that we have a new member, 
our newest member of um, First United Methodist Church here is Connie Hinton. She um, has joined our church family this week. She's sitting in the back, I'll tell you that much. Um, she didn't want to come forward. Um, she's not comfortable with that, but that's okay. We're comfortable with her being here, and we thank, we welcome her and thank her for becoming a part of us. And so let's welcome her. <laughs> and be sure to, to find her later after the service is over. The second, I just want to draw your attention to an announcement that is in the, in the bulletin, but, um, but may have, have slipped through um, as you were reading. On Saturday at 2 will be a celebration of the graduation of two of the Oasis, Northwest Arkansas Oasis women, women who have, um, uh, over a two-year period, have recovered their lives. They have been in various forms of addictions, um, homelessness, um, prostitution in general. These ladies have found the person that they were created to be. This is a Christian fellowship of women who come back to themselves and to God. And it's a blessing to be able to celebrate a graduation with them this Saturday. It's at 2 o'clock in Becker Hall. I invite you to come and to congratulate them. Bring something small. They will be moving into their own homes. So bring something small that they can use in their home. And they will truly appreciate it. And we will all share that together. Please pray with me. Oh, Holy One. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. For, Lord, you are the rock and the redeemer of our lives. Amen. As Brother Jamie said, we are in the third week of a, and the final week of a sermon series entitled The Real Reality Show. The first week, Brother Jamie preached on the reality of Jesus appearing to two as they were on the road to Emmaus. And last week, Pastor Judy preached of the reality of Jesus' appearance to the disciples, and especially to Thomas, as they cowered in fear behind closed doors in Jerusalem shortly after, after the crucifixion. This week, the message moves to Galilee, where the disciples, who are fishermen, have returned to their real lives. And that is where we see that Jesus appears once again. Now, I have to admit, when, Jesus, when Brother Jamie said that we're going to, um, to preach on the real reality show, that the first thing that came to my mind was the real housewives, the shows on TV that started in Orange County, California, where um, the lives of very affluent women are portrayed. And this phenomenon, if you want to call it that, has moved from Orange County, a TV show set in Orange County, to New York City, which is where this, this picture is, and then on to Miami and Washington, D.C., and then it's gone international to Vancouver and Melbourne and, and um, in, even into Cheshire, England. So it has gone worldwide, this series, these series of the real housewives of wherever, in this case, of New York City. These are affluent women. I think we can tell by their dress. <laughs> Not all of them are housewives. Surprise, surprise. But they are women, and this is quoted from the Orange County um, uh, origination of this, this, these series. They are women who lead glamorous lives, in a picturesque gated community in Orange County where the average home has a multi-million dollar price tag and residents include CEOs and retired professional athletes. 
in the picture, we see the real housewives of New York City elegantly dressed in their glitz and their glamour, waiting to catch the subway train in New York City. Now everyone dresses like this when they get ready to catch the subway train. That's the reality of New York City, is it not? Pretty interesting. The episodes focus on the circumstances of their everyday lives, which include, among other things, divorces and affairs, body, par body parts, and the plastic surgery to make those body parts more perfect. They focus on expensive clothes and cars, on parties held in the Hamptons and tumultuous friendships as each of the housewives tries to outdo the other in their lavish lifestyle. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I do believe that these women may be among that top 1% that Bernie Sanders keeps telling us all about. As you see more and more of these TV shows, as you learn more of them, you begin to conclude that there's nothing real, nothing solid going on here. The sands of these women's lives constantly shift, leading from one scripted event to the next, one shallow relationship to the next. There's constant turmoil, constant brokenness, People get used and abused. There's no reality, no reality of truth or wisdom, no higher purpose, no real love for others. Instead, these women are co constantly looking only to themselves with selfish pride and pretense in whatever latest scheme the writers have dreamed up. So if this is not real, then what is the real reality show? Where in our lives do we find the reality of life? Where do we find a solid foundation of truth that does not shift under our feet? And is it possible to find it by looking only to ourselves? In today's scripture, the disciples have returned to their everyday lives in Galilee. They have returned to their livelihood, fishing. This gives them food and support for their families. Much like the fishermen on the screen, the everyday life of these men is ordinary. They are real people. Their lives are filled with hard work and real struggles, not scripted struggles. As we read the scripture, imagine that we are with the disciples in Galilee and realize that time has passed since being in Jerusalem. Time has passed since the crucifixion and since Jesus appeared behind closed doors in Jerusalem. And they have traveled what is, in those days, a long ways away back to Galilee to their ordinary, their real lifestyles. I will be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, beginning with verse 1. After this, and what that means is after the, the appearance in Jerusalem, Jesus appeared again to the disciples, this time at the Tiberias Sea, the Sea of Galilee. And this is how he did it. Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the brothers Zebedee, that would be James and John, and two other unnamed disciples were together. And Simon Peter announced, I'm going fishing. And the rest of them replied, we're going with you. They went out and they got in the boat and they caught nothing that night. When the sun came up, Jesus was standing on the beach. 
but they didn't recognize him. And Jesus spoke to them and he said, Good morning, did you catch anything for breakfast? And they answered, No. And he said, Throw the net off of the right side of the boat and see what happens. So they did what he said, and all of a sudden, there were so many fish in it that they weren't strong enough to pull it in. And then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the master. And when Simon Peter realized that it was the master, he threw on some clothes, for he was stripped for work, and he dove into the sea. And the other disciples came in the boat, for they weren't too far from land, a hundred yards or so, and they pulled along with them the net full of fish. And when they got out of the boat, they saw that there was a fire laid on the beach with fish and bread cooking on it. And Jesus said, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. And Simon Peter joined them and pulled the net to shore, 153 big fish. Now, that's just a large number. That 153 spe specifically maybe has no significance, but lots of big fish. And even with all those fish, the net didn't tear apart. And Jesus said, breakfast is ready. And not one of the disciples dared to ask, well, who are you? They knew, they knew it was the master. And Jesus then took the bread and gave it to them. And he did the same with the fish. And this was the third time that Jesus had shown himself alive to the, the disciples since he had been raised from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Life for the real fishermen of Galilee was that Jesus appeared to them that day. But not only that he appeared, that he appeared far away from Jerusalem where they had last seen him. But not only that, they, that he appeared far away from Jerusalem, but that he appeared in the happenings of their everyday lives. Not in the synagogue, not in a teaching moment, but just to come to meet them for breakfast. It's like one of us encountering Jesus as we sit down at the table in Cracker Barrel. Or when we walk out just to get the mail from the mailbox. Or when we were in school as we headed down to the school lunchroom. Or when we're about to tee off at the seventh hole in the golf course. How many of us have felt the Lord's presence in times of difficulties and in times of extreme joy and beauty, many of us would say, yes, we have. But in the ordinary, the things of everyday life, maybe not so much. Yes, the disciples were still kind of confused by the events of Jerusalem. And yes, they hadn't caught any fish, but they weren't in the synagogue. They weren't looking for wisdom and guidance. They weren't in any immediate crisis that they felt they needed Jesus. But Jesus showed up anyway. He showed up, and he told them where to drop their nets. And he showed up, and he cooked them for them and fed them breakfast. He showed up and offered himself. He offered him the reality of a type of friendship and nourishment of life that sustains. This is not the kinds of friendship that the real housewives share. The real housewives share friendships that change with each of their self-centered whims and friendships that desert each other when a more exciting potential husband comes along. Jesus' type of friendship is a deep and lasting friendship that is solid 
and something that we can count on. Have you ever had Jesus show up totally, unexpectedly? Many of you, I think, could shake your head yes. I like to call those Jesus sightings. After the fact, many of us would probably say, yes, that was a Jesus sighting. But just like the disciples, in that moment, we might not recognize that that is Jesus. Maybe when we were a child, we got to the school lunchroom and realized we had left our lunch home. But Jesus was there in the school lunch lady who stepped up and said, here, here's some lunch for you to have so that you won't go hungry today. Maybe we had headed down to the mailbox in loneliness, about to crumble in the desperation of the loss that we have just suffered. And Jesus was there in a note of encouragement from a church family member we don't even know. And she or he has sent this note to lift us up after the death of our loved one. It was just the right words at just the right time, exactly what we needed. Maybe we're about to tee off on that seventh hole, and in front of us is Jesus in the beauty of a lanky blue heron who cocks his head and looks at us as if he wants to start a conversation. Or maybe you have a story like mine, where I was on my way to the airport, going to see my mom in Maryland. That's oftentimes what the airport um, stretch is all about. Running late as usual, and you have a flat tire. And in an instant, it wasn't more than five seconds, Jesus showed up. He changed my tire. He asked for nothing more that I, than that I pay it forward to someone else. And somehow, in spite of the fact I was late to begin with, I managed to make my plane. Now, I can't explain it. There really wasn't enough time for all of that to happen. But somehow, I made it anyway. Did I see Jesus in that moment? Not in that moment. But when I had a, a chance to reflect, I knew that that was a Jesus sighting. There's a beautiful Jeremiah scripture that was read this morning by Elaine, and I'd like to read it again just because there's certain parts of it I'd like us to hear again. Jeremiah 29, verses 10 through 14. And by the way, the, the, um, the Israelites are in exile in Babylon. Jerusalem has been destroyed. They have been taken in captivity. They are far from home. And the Lord says, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then, when you will call on me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Are we seeking, looking, searching, as the scripture says we must, for the appearance of the risen Lord? Or are we going our own way, leading our own lives, have we, been, have we allowed ourselves to be led into the exile by the dazzling lights of Broadway, by the headlights of our own selfish pride? 
Are we following a script like the housewives do, written by the captivity of glitz and glamour that has no foundation whatsoever? Or are we searching for a story written by the solid truth of a Savior who walks with us in everyday circumstances, who eats breakfast with us, who sh shows up and walks with us in the realities of our ordinary gardens, who leads us and walks with us through the realities of each of our own struggles. Jesus said, the world cannot receive the spirit of truth because it neither sees him nor knows him. The real housewives are in the world. But Jesus, the Holy Spirit of truth, is in the world also. And he is there for us to seek and to find. The very last verse of the book of the Gospel of John, the very last verse of this 21st chapter that we read part of just a moment ago, says, there are so many other things that Jesus did if they were all written down, each and every one of them, one by one, I cannot imagine a world big enough to hold such a library of books. We can't imagine a world big enough to hold all that Jesus does in our daily lives. But he has promised, he has promised that if we seek him, we will find him. And in the finding, we will be blessed with a fullness of life that has a solid foundation and is far beyond anything we could ever script. This is the story of the real reality show that each of us should be seeking. We have a choice. We can be led by the worldly script that merely entertains, or we can be led by the story written by our Savior, our Savior who offers us the grace and the glory of a love and a friendship that doesn't entertain, it sustains. Pray with me. Jesus, lover of our souls, lead us in your grace and in your glory. Help us to see the reality of you, that our lives may reflect that reality in all that we do. Amen. This morning, we invite you to become a part of our church family. If you are so led, we invite you to pray at the altar, either with a pastor or just in personal conversation with our Lord. And I invite you also to stand as we sing our final hymn, he, Where He Leads Me. <laughs>
so you go forth and so the real reality of life to look for Jesus and to embrace him in his power and the presence of the Holy Spirit reveals to you the real one who loves us all. Hope you'll come and join with us tomorrow evening at 5 o'clock if you'd like to know more about the ministry of Kibo, 6 o'clock for the dinner. And there's so many things going on. Keep your bulletin close to you. Go in the knowledge that our God is God who's faithful. Faithful in our past, present, and future. And remember, we don't simply come to church. Who are we called to be? Be the church. Hope you have a great day. Thank you.